So after watching this video lecture, students are going to be able to relate uh, KB to the ionization product of bases. Uh, you'll be able to calculate equilibrium problems using KB and relate KA and KB to pKa and pKB, respectively. So there are going to be two categories of weak bases that we're going to be looking at. So the first one is basically a category of compounds that are neutral and that have an atom with a non-ponding pair of electrons that can accept protons. Okay, so we have ammonia um, and an amine analog here. What I want you guys to notice is that uh, there are no charges on these molecules. I want you to notice that the nitrogen has three things or three atoms or groups attached and a lone pair of electrons. The same is true for this amine group over here. Um, what I want you to notice is the R is representing any hydrocarbon. Okay, so that could be like, you know, CH2, CH3, or some other um, chain of carbon and hydrogen atoms. Okay, so if we go ahead and we write out these structures, what I want you to notice here um, is that they're both neutral, there's no charges, there's three uh, different um, elements or groups attached, and there are lone pairs of electrons here. Now these lone pairs are what in uh, part the basic character or the ability to take on electrons. So if I take this ammonia um, right here and I interact it with uh, some sort of uh, generic acid, what's going to happen is that the electrons from my base are going to pick up the proton here. We're going to end up producing is uh, the ammonium ion that we see here uh, as our conjugate acid okay, and then this species as our conjugate base. Okay, so basically this is how uh, these uh, groups or these, these types of compounds can behave as bases. Okay, now the other option or the other category of weak bases are going to be the anions of weak acids. So basically uh, what we're going to be looking at is in the context of a salt, so right here we have sodium hypochlorite, um, we are going to look at the sources of the ions that come from this uh, salt. So in this particular case, the anion here would be sourced from something like HClO, which is hypochlorous acid, which is a very weak acid. Okay, so what ends up happening is that uh, this um, acid here, when it disassociates, um, produces a conjugate base, right, and of course, um, conjugate acid here. And what ends up happening is that we find that these species, these anions that get produced or are, are sourced from uh, weak acids, end up uh, with the capability of behaving as bases in solution. So what will happen is, when we go ahead and put the hypochlorite into solution, um, it's going to behave as a base, okay, we'll put that with water, and what we'll end up producing is the following uh, hydroxide ion, which is going to be our conjugate base, um, and uh, regenerating some uh, hypochlorous acid, and um, subsequently obviously increasing the pH of our solution by putting hydroxide ions in solution. So this is how we will treat um, our salts and analyze our salts with respect to their changes in pH, but we'll look at these in more detail um, in future lecture series. Now let's go ahead and let's talk about um, Kb or the base ionization constant. So the base ionization constant is going to be basically the same idea um, as Ka. The difference is, is that we're dealing with the disassociation or the ionization products of a base. Okay, so we take our base, put it in water, we're going to form a conjugate acid and a conjugate base. So Kb is going to be equal to um, the concentration of our conjugate acid times the concentration of our conjugate base divided by um, the concentration of our uh, base that we placed in solution. Okay, notice once again we avoid um, including the H2O because it's a pure liquid. So basically guys, this is just the equilibrium expression associated with um, a base. Okay, so Kb here is uh, going to be treated pretty similarly. The only difference here is obviously we're going to be focusing on hydroxide ion concentrations instead of H plus concentration um, like we did for Ka. Now, um, some common values for Kb can be associated with um, the ver various bases here that we see. Okay, you guys should see a, a common trend amongst these, um, that nitrogen group with three things attached. Um, and if you look over here, you know, our K val KB values um, vary. They're relatively small. So these are all going to be um, pretty weak bases. So obviously KB, much like KA, is going to be used uh, for calculations involving weak bases. 
um, and we'll look at that in a little bit. This problem tells us that we are going to be um, using KB to calculate our hydroxide ion um, concentration. So guys, much in the same way that we would treat a um, ice table problem type problem with our Ka, we're going to do that same process here, but we're going to be using KB instead. Okay, so when codeine dissolves in water, okay, it's going to produce the conjugate acid um, and this conjugate base. Okay, so our KB um, equilibrium expression is going to be the following. Now notice guys, I'm using these generic models um, for my base um, and the conjugates. Um, that's just to keep it simple. If you guys wanted to write out the codeine formula, you totally could. Um, it doesn't really matter. Um, that's up to you. Okay, now, now that we have our equilibrium expression, we're, we also know our uh, equilibrium constant, Kb, so we're going to plug that in there. Now, of course, we need to know our concentrations at equilibrium, or at least we need to solve for them. Okay, so we're going to need an ice table, just like we've used in the past. Okay, so 5.0 times 10 to the negative third is what we have here. Um, and zero and zero initially for each of those uh, ionization species. Okay, we know our change in X is going to look like the following. Okay, and um, these here are going to be our concentration values. Now, we're going to go ahead and plug those into our equilibrium expression. Okay, so um, it's going to be equal to X squared over uh, 5.0 times 10 to the negative third minus X. Okay, now what we're going to go ahead and do now is treat our um, x as if it's um, negligible because we have a really small kb, and we're going to go ahead and solve for uh, the remaining x, which will give us the following to then take the square roots of both sides on. Okay, so x is going to equal 8.916 times 10 to the negative fifth. And if we go ahead and check that, we'll find out that um, basically our percent um, uh, percentage associated with this disassociation product is basically 1.78%, uh, okay, which is totally acceptable, so we can make this assumption uh, and it's valid. Okay, so now what they have asked us is to go ahead and calculate for our hydroxide ion concentration. So if we go back here to our um, ice table, we notice that X is equal to the hydroxide ion concentration. So X here is going to be equal to our hydroxide ion concentration. So that's going to give us the 8.9 times 10 to the negative fifth molar. Okay, and that is our hydroxide ion concentration, which we could then use to calculate pH or pOH, um, depending on what else they would ask us. So how do Ka and Kb relate for conjugate acid-base pairs? Okay, so basically, guys, if we have common ions that show up um, in our conjugate pairs, uh, what we can do is we can utilize this relationship. Um, so Ka times Kb is going to equal Kw. Okay, so if we look at the ionization product um, and process for an acid, okay, and we look at how um, this conjugate base uh, behaves in water, Okay, and we go ahead and sum those two equations, and if we get the ionization products associated with water, okay, we get our Kw. Okay, so um, in this context, that allows us to then relate Ka times Kb being equal to Kw. Because okay, remember, uh, when we multiply two reactions, that sum to, uh, sorry, when we add two reactions, um, the K values can be multiplied together to find the K of the overall reaction that we produce. Okay, so um, this relationship can actually allow us to interconvert between Ka and Kb, as we see below here. Um, and so we're already familiar with these types of manipulations. So if we have Kb and we need Ka, we can use um, this information. If we have Ka and we need Kb, we, Kb, we can use this equation to solve for um, the Kb value. So here's a table that you guys might see um, for Ka and Kb values. Uh, for acids and their conjugates um, here. So uh, this is something that you guys may need to utilize when doing your problems. So these are available in the back of your textbook. Um, but if they're not provided to you or access to it is not provided, you will be provided with obviously one or the other. So for this problem, guys, basically we can utilize uh, conjugate, acid, conjugate acid and base pairing 
um, in order to calculate Ka or Kb uh, for a specific substance. So in this case, guys, they've get, told us to calculate Kb for fluoride ion um, given the Ka value for HF. Now notice, guys, what has to be true is that um, these have to be conjugates of one another, meaning that they have to ha share an ion um, in common. Okay, so the fluoride ion here um, is what is common to HF. Okay, so um, basically we're going to take advantage of this relationship that we know, okay, and we're going to solve for Kb, so Kw divided by Ka is what we're going to plug in, so 1 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 6.8 times 10 to the negative 4th, plug that all into our calculator, that's going to give us 1.5 times 10 to the negative 11th as our Kb. Okay, so these are very simple and straightforward problems, and obviously if we were um, given Ka um, or uh, Kb for a base and asked for Ka, we could do this um, problem. Now, uh, just make sure, guys, that the uh, Ka that you're being provided or the Kb that you're being provided has a common ion. If it doesn't, these problems will not work. Okay, so Ka and Kb uh, represent the ionization process of um, acids and bases in solution. And pKa and pKb do the same. However, what they do is basically give us numbers that are usually more manageable. Um, they're usually not as small, so that's something that we can more intrinsically understand. So um, the way that we get pKa and pKb is we take the negative logs of Ka and Kb respectively. Okay, now um, Ka and Kb, basically the higher... Uh, the value of Ka or Kb, um, the stronger um, your acid or base is going to be. Okay, now it's the opposite for um, pKa and pKb. The lower your pKa or pKb, okay, um, the stronger your acid or base is going to be, respectively. Okay, so make sure that you guys get this difference in your head uh, so that you don't get confused when questions are asked with respect to pKa and pKb. So um, additionally, guys, we can relate pKa and pKb to pKw um, by this equation here. Uh, basically, just memorize it, know it, and you'll be comfortable with it.